Um, I do want to start making some content where I react and give my two cents um, to political events. Um, and so obviously we just had a general election this past Tuesday, November the 5th, where Donald Trump dominated the election. The Republicans dominated the election. Um, I'm, I live here in South Texas. This region has been dominated by Democrats for over 50 years. Um, and all the counties of South Texas, of the Rio Grande Valley, they all flipped to Republican. They all went to Donald Trump. For the first time in the history of the Rio Grande Valley, a state senator, a Republican state state senator candidate won the election and will represent, a Republican will represent the Rio Grande Valley in the state uh, Senate. This region has been dominated by Democrats and due to the views and policies and outlook of Donald Trump and his ideas, he was able to flip one of the deepest blue areas of Texas to Republican. And so one of my main reasons I support Donald Trump is foreign policy, international relations, avoiding war. It is his rhetoric and his uh, views and positions against the military industrial complex, against the national defense apparatus, against these intelligence agencies who are so hungry for war, they do not care the lives that they uh, ruin. They don't care how many lives they send into war. And so when Donald Trump made that comment about Liz Cheney, we all know the Cheney is one of the biggest war hawks, war mongers, pieces of shit um, to ever exist in this country. Um, there is not a war that they do not like. I mean, these MFers get up every day for war to, to look for somewhere to send soldiers to fight. And so I digress, but um, it was when he when Donald Trump made these comments about Liz Cheney that um, how would she like it uh, if she was the one actually going to war? Like she would not be so pro-war if she was actually the one who had to get a rifle and was facing other people with weapons firing at her in in a in a combat zone. Uh, she would be more probably would be more reluctant to send other people's children into war and creating all of this, all of these wars that are unnecessary. So uh, without further ado, I, I, that's kind of, I kind of want to tell you what, what my, my thoughts are before watching Putin's initial comments to uh, Donald Trump winning the election. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Пользуясь случаем, хочу поздравить его с избранием на пост президента Соединенных Штатов Америки. Я уже говорил, что, что мы будем работать с любым главой государства, которому окажет доверие американский народ. Так будет и, действительно и на практике. Вы знаете, можно тоже как угодно к нему относиться, ведь все изначально в первой его итерации президентской говорили, что он бизнесмен в основном, и он мало чего в этом понимает в политике, ошибок может наделать. Ну, во-первых, я вам могу сказать, его поведение в момент покушения на его жизнь, я не знаю, но на меня произвело это впечатление. Okay, one thing that I noticed about this comment, specifically where Putin says, uh, you know, I heard Donald Trump say that he was mainly a businessman, so that when he became president, he made a lot of mistakes because of his lack of knowledge. 
obviously I'm paraphrasing what he said right now, but you kind of get what I'm saying, right? This is what he, what he said. Um, that tells me that President Putin was watching the Joe Rogan podcast episode with Donald Trump because in that episode, that is brought up, like specifically that, that, you know, his appointments, you know, the John Bolton appointment, the John Kelly appointment, these other warmongers, warhawks that Trump himself appointed to his cabinet and his administration and his, you know, explanation for that. Um, he said that, you know, I was mainly a businessman and then I was not familiar with the inside world of politics, you know, when it comes to appointments and having to hire people. Um, and so I just kind of, through my ignorance, I just went to people who were already established or recommended by other people. So it just goes to show, I'm saying all of this to show, to highlight the reach and the impact of the Joe Rogan podcast and that episode that Donald Trump uh, did with Joe Rogan. Он мужественный человек оказался. И дело не только что вот э, в поднятой руке и в призыве бороться за свои, за их общие идеалы. Дело не только в этом. Э, хотя это, конечно, знаете, на драйве, на таком все как бы. Человек проявляет себя в условиях, в экстраординарных условиях. Вот здесь человек проявляет себя. И он себя проявил, на мой взгляд, очень правильным образом, мужественно, как мужчина. And so you saw there, uh, it was pretty positive. I mean, oh, Putin's going to do the typical politician uh, comments view of not trying to be overly friendly, especially with a current adversary, especially an adversary of the caliber of the United States. And I'm sure he's worried. He's we weary, excuse me, because even in Trump's administration, he himself funded some of the fight of Ukraine against Russia. I think that was had a lot to do with him trying to fend off multiple fronts um, that were attacking him during his presidency, like the intelligence, uh, intelligence uh, apparatus, military industrial complex, national defense. Uh, type of front that he was facing, but also in Congress and all the impeachments. I think he was just trying to see if that would kind of get people to lay off of him, but he was wrong, obviously. And so I, I can see that he's worried, but the tone is much different than what it is with Biden. You know, Biden called him an SOB. Uh, Biden, Biden called Putin an SOB. Uh, Putin calls Biden in response to that, that, you know, it was predictable that Biden is pretty much predictable that he's he, know, he knew Biden was going to respond that way, uh, given that Biden is part of that establishment, um, part of Washington, D.C., um, that is just, you know, looking for war, uh, does not really see the ramifications of war. And, and, and so he knew, and, and Putin went on to say, um, you know, we prefer Biden to be the president because, you know, how predictable he is. When somebody, when you're predictable, your opponent can control you and can control the battle. Um, you know, we can relay this to football. If you're predictable in a football field, your opponent's gonna knows the strategy as to how to beat you. So um, with Trump, he's a little bit more erratic, breaks from the mold of the military industrial complex and the warmongers. You know, he will look for peace instead of uh, war and so I do just want to show you all why is it that I, that really drove me to Trump besides the other stuff, but you know, the social cultural aspect, the economy, uh, the border, uh, stuff. But for me, what really did it was, and obviously the whole, you know, the mainstream media always, when some, when the mainstream media attacks somebody, it makes me like that person that is being attacked by the mainstream media. It pushes me to like them because I know how much full of shit the mainstream media is. So it tells me something about that person. So, but just want to show you all the comments that during the campaign, 
uh, Donald Trump made towards warmongers and war hawks in Washington, D.C., this will give you chills. And this is what, and I don't understand why, and he didn't, obviously he didn't have to, but I would have loved to have seen more of this at his rallies, but this should get a standing ovation and it will give you chills. World War III has never been closer than it is right now. We need to clean house of all of the warmongers and America last globalists in the deep state, the Pentagon, the State Department, and the national security industrial complex. One of the reasons I was the only president in generations who didn't start a war is that I was the only president who rejected the catastrophic advice of many of Washington's generals, bureaucrats, and the so-called diplomats who only know how to get us into conflict, but they don't know how to get us out. Wow. Wow. He went against the advice of all the bureaucracy, all these diplomats who do nothing but toe the line of the establishment and the military industrial complex of war hawks who are always looking, just let's just pull the trigger on a war and that do not know how to get us out. Thank you. Thank you, President Trump. Thank you. They do not know how to get out of the mess they create. This goes all the way after World War II with Vietnam, with Afghanistan, I believe in the 80s, with the Mujahideen and the Soviet Union going into the 90s. Desert Storm in the 2000s, the Iraq War, when they lied to us about weapons of mass destruction, you know, Dick Cheney, uh, uh, the biggest piece of shit that exists, um, George W. Bush, the old guard of the Republican Party, those neocons, warmongers, assholes, who they should be the ones who should be on the front lines trying to fight those wars they create and trying to clean up all that mess that they that they created so what a powerful statement from president trump and this is why i supported him this past election this is why i went from a democrat to a voting for president trump for decades we've had the very same people such as victoria newland and many others just like her obsessed with pushing ukraine toward NATO, not to mention the State Department support for uprisings in Ukraine. So now in, in this section, Trump is bringing out the dirty laundry of the defense apparatus of the United States, the State Department, uh, the diplomats that represent the State Department and the narratives they try to push and the dirty the dirty workings uh, that he do overseas. So um, she's she, he mentioned there, Victoria Newland, I believe is who he mentioned there. Uh, she was a State Department diplomat who was sent to Ukraine to create chaos and push for the overthrow and the coup of the, the sitting president of Ukraine at that time in 2014 and replace him with a president slash prime minister who was friendly to the ideas of the United States. Those ideas being meaning be, uh, being anti-Russia and hostile towards Russia. And so right here, right now, Trump is not, is not holding anything back. He's really exposing the, the shady shit that these bureaucrats, these war hawks that they do overseas. So he's cooking. These people have been seeking confrontation for a long time, much like the case in Iraq and other parts of the world. And now we're teetering on the brink of World War III. And a lot of people don't see it, but I see it. And I've been right about a lot of things. They all say Trump's been right about everything. Wow. What can you say? I'll leave it there.
Thank you all for watching.